Hi, I just wanted to talk through the installation of my test environment. And this is the model that I use pretty much exclusively for all of my testing of the Oracle database and associated tools. Now, it's not your standard model, and I'm not saying this is the only way, and I'm definitely not saying it's the best way. Um, but this is the approach I use since it provides me with the most flexibility um, in what I basically do on a daily basis. And it's made up of um, four key components, obviously the Oracle, the Oracle databases, and the client infrastructure that I use, um, but three additional components, um, the Jupyter Notebooks, um, the Python programming language, and the Docker um, application container uh, environment. And I use all four pieces um, um, together um, uh, driven inside of my own workstation. Now, I've got a relatively powerful um, workstation that I use at home. It's um, a 500 gigabyte solid state drive, 32 gigabytes memory, fast Pentium processor. But I found that um, with this model, I can support not only you know single instance of the Oracle database, but like many instances all running at different versions. Um, I use it to test out the Oracle database and data guard configurations. I use it to test out um, sharding inside of the Oracle database, i.e. building out a uh, sharded model um, with lots of various shards inside of that space. So a um, very flexible approach um, for my, my particular um, requirements. Why do I use um, Python um, to script and uh, drive the entire run? Well, it's a really flexible language and it enables me to automate a whole number of processes which I normally manually have to interact. And um, the real power of Python isn't just the simplicity and flexibility of the language, it's the fact there are so many modules um, that I can actually use um, to make my job easier. And most notably in this particular instance is a very good um, Docker API, which again, enables me to automate this whole um, process as well. I use Docker um, mainly because it's pretty much regarded now as the industry standard for the containerization of applications and then their future um, deployment to um, um, Kubernetes and a whole raft of other infrastructures as well. And it's a really powerful way. It enables me to create template uh, images and I can then use those images to create the containers to run my tests on. And so I can build out slightly different versions of those um, containers as I um, find the need to do so. So um, some things about this particular installation. I've mentioned that uh, my workstation is relatively powerful. That probably isn't a core requirement. I know this works just brilliantly. I run this model on my notebook as well. Um, I am uh, have tested this on top of Oracle Enterprise Linux um, 7.3 and on top of Mojave um, Mac OS. So those are the two environments I've tested with. Now, I know this should work on top of Windows, and I say should, I haven't tested it. I have no access to a Windows environment, so um, I'm not gonna be able to give that a go, and I won't be able to talk you through the various steps, but they should follow very similar models. Um, the other thing to say about this is that I'm, I'm not gonna talk you through the installation of Docker. Um, it's pretty straightforward. You can get it for Windows and Mac and Linux. Um, obviously, Linux um, is uh, and um, Mac are very simple installs. I installed it using Yum on Linux, and I installed it using uh, Brewmaster, um, which is effectively the same sort of equivalent as uh, Yum or apt-get on um, uh, macOS. And if you haven't seen Brewmaster or Brew um, on your Mac, it's essential tool and you should be using it to install all of your core utilities inside of your environment. I've also made the assumption that um, you're comfortable using the command line. Um, uh, nearly everything I do on a daily basis is either driven from a browser or from the uh, command line. Um, you should have an understanding of the various tools I'm using. So in this particular instance, it will be tools like yum um, and so on. But uh, with all that said and done, um, and uh, we'll be you talking through in this particular video just the installation of these components. You have a similar environment to the one that I use. In the following video, I'll actually go through the actual um, creation um, using um, 
Python and Jupyter and the Oracle database to create the base image that we're actually going to use for the Dockers. And then there'll be a follow-on video talking about then using that base image to create the containers and giving you some examples of standing up a, a core database and then maybe a standby database. Then there'll be a follow-on video after that I'm talking about how you can actually use Swing Bench inside of this environment to do load testing and to give you an ongoing load um, to do your testing. So with that all said and done, let's get on and um, give this a go. So let's get going. Um, what we're going to do here is installed into Oracle Enterprise Linux and it's a stock Oracle Enterprise Linux. There's nothing particularly special about it. Um, version 7.3. Now the version of Python that comes with um, uh, typical Linux is usually 2.7 and to be honest um, we should be looking to really use uh, version 3.6 and above uh, whenever we get the opportunity. So what we're going to do here is quickly install um, uh, Python 3.6 and to do that um, on Oracle Enterprise Linux you use yum and we need to do this as root because it's been installed into the um, base operating system. Pretty straightforward, yum install um, Python 3.6 and it will go through and create and install all of the dependencies for us. And I've sped this up um, just a little bit. So now we've actually got Python 3.6 installed. We now want to go through and install a package manager called pip for Python, which will enable us to trivially install all of the required Python modules. And as before, we're going to do this as root. So sudo yum install python 3.6 pip, and it will go through. It's a very small install, so it won't take any time at all. Now, the final utility that we actually need to use at this point is a tool called virtual environment, um, virtual env. And virtual env is a Python utility, and that enables us to create effectively Python sand pits. Um, and when we create one of these sand pits, it'll install um, version of Python and pip and all of the associated utilities for us. So really, really small. Now we've actually got the utility virtual env. What we can do next is to actually go through and create one of these sand pits. We specify the version of the Python interpreter you want to use and give it a directory name. And you can see here it's going through and installing pip and wheel at this moment in time. So we've got all of the tools we actually need for our virtual environment. Um, and you can see if we look here that it's actually gone through and created that um, physical directory for us called my virtual env. To activate it, we need to source the activate um, uh, utility in the bin directory. What you should see after we've activated it is it goes through and changes the prompt to indicate that which virtual environment we're actually operating in. Now, if we use pip, it will call the pip installed in virtual environment, and we've got very few modules installed at this point in time. Now, next thing we want to install is git. Very fast, as per usual, sudo yum install git. And this will actually go through and enable us to pull down um, you know, uh, directories from a the GitHub repository. In this instance, I've created one called Jupyter Lab Work, which has got a number of files inside of it. So you'll install that, and it'll create a directory for us called Jupyter Lab Work. And inside of there are some notebooks that we'll use later on in this test and um, effectively uh, a requirements.txt, which should be useful later on. Final step, installing Instant Client on Linux. This is incredibly easy these days. Um, you can use yum to do it. It'll take about a couple of minutes to install, and it will go through and install the required client libraries for us. So now we've actually got most of the major components. Um, what we actually need to do at this point in time is to install the final um, Python modules. Um, and um, I've, as I mentioned earlier on, inside of the Jupyter Lab Work directory, I've got a file called Jupyter Requirements.txt. Let's just change into that directory. So it makes things slightly easier. Um, and inside there is Requirements.txt. We can ask pip to install all of the files I've listed inside of there. So pip install um, minus r and then Requirements.txt. And it will go through and look at all of the modules I've listed inside there and install them. Now it will install of their depend uh, an awful lot of their dependencies at this point in time. So we can see we've got all of these new um, Python modules installed for us. So the very final step, we've got all the things we need to um, run this um, particular lab um, Jupyter environment with is to run Jupyter Lab itself. 
when you start this with on a machine with a monitor or attached, i.e. not headless, um, it will actually, if you've got a browser installed, launch you straight into that browser as well. So we're going to be using Jupyter Lab. You could use Jupyter Notebook as well, but Jupyter Lab is for us. It will go through start the actual node application, which in turn will actually um, take us straight into Jupyter um, uh, Lab itself and into the first notebook we've actually got inside of the Jupyter Lab workbook directory. And that's it. That's all that we need to do at this moment in time. And so in the next video, what we're actually going to do, as I mentioned earlier on, is to go through the process of um, use, downloading Oracle from the Oracle website and then building our base image that we're actually going to use in the um, following um, tests and labs um, inside of the upcoming videos. So at this point, um, thanks very much for watching and I hope it's been useful and I'll see you in the next video.